Welcome back to We're Reading Virtual Story Times Summer Reading Program for the week of July 26, 2021. Story and craft number two, Odd Animals. The world of weird animals, pink is for blobfish. Discovering the world's perfectly pink animals by Jess Keating with illustrations by David DeGrand. Think you know pink? Think again. Pink is for blobfish. Bizarre blobfish are made of a gelatinous goo, which is less dense than water. This allows them to lazily drift through the ocean like bloated pink balloons. Blobfish don't hunt for food. Instead, when something edible floats by, they simply open their mouth and gulp it down. Pretty in pink? The blobfish was recently voted the ugliest animal in the world in a poll taken by the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. Luckily, blobfish don't use mirrors, so they aren't bothered by their less than cute faces. As if this wasn't bad enough, another name for blobfish is Fathead Sculpin. These fish can't catch a break. Pink is for pink toe tarantulas. It is very easy to spot mysterious Antilles pink toe tarantulas in pet stores, but much harder to find them in the wild. At night, they scurry out of their funnel webs high in the trees to search for food. Hairy business. Have you ever thought of using your hair as a weapon? Well, these spiders do. When they get nervous, they can rub off irritating hairs from their abdomen. These hairs get into the eyes and skin of a predator, which is extremely painful and a huge bummer for any creature looking for an easy meal. Despite their beautiful pink coloration as adults, Antilles pink toe spiderlings are bright blue when they hatch. Pink is for orchid mantises. With flattened petal-like arms that stand out against green leaves, orchid mantises look like harmless, beautiful flowers. But these predators have strong arms and big appetites, patiently waiting to snatch up any insect that comes too close. Made you look. Sometimes nature can be tricky. Scientists wanted to know if the insects that landed on orchid mantises were really fooled into thinking they were flowers. They came up with an experiment where they gave insects a choice. They could land on the orchid mantis or on a real Malaysian flower. And voila, it turned out the insects picked mantises more often than the actual flowers. Pink is for pygmy seahorses. Pygmy seahorses hide out in plain sight nestled amongst the pink coral of the ocean floor. They are extremely fragile, so it's important for scuba divers to be careful around them. Even the bright flash of a camera can disturb them. Number one, dad. In most animal species, it's usually the female who becomes pregnant and gives birth. But seahorses don't care about tradition. Instead, male seahorses become pregnant and carry the eggs in a pouch on their bellies until they hatch. If that isn't enough to earn them dad of the year award, they also keep the eggs clean and protect them from predators. Pink is for roseate spoonbills. Not all pink animals are born pink. When baby spoonbills hatch, they are chubby and covered in downy white feathers. As they grow up, their feathers turn various shades of pink because of pigments in the shrimp they eat. Want a feather in your cap? In the past, women used to wear hats decorated with vibrant spoonbill feathers. Fans made of spoonbill wings were also very popular. Because of aggressive plume hunters, the roseate spoonbill was once nearly extinct. By 1940, there were only about 30 breeding pairs left in a Florida flock that previously contained thousands. Today, thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers have rebounded. Pink is for Amazon River Dolphins. Amazon River Dolphins are very intelligent and they have extremely complex ways of hunting. Several dolphins work together as a group to drive fish near the shore like a pack of dogs herding sheep. With the fish stranded close to land, the dolphins can enjoy a fishy feast together. A different dolphin! Unlike dolphins from the open ocean, Amazon River Dolphins have flexible necks. They sweep their snouts through the watery vegetation, flushing prey from their hiding places. A new species of dolphin, 
the Araguayan River Dolphin was just discovered in 2014. It was the first new river dolphin species found in almost a century. River dolphins are incredibly rare, so finding a new species is a huge feat. Pink is for pink fairy armadillos. You won't find these creatures in any fairy tale. Pink fairy armadillos are very real and very hard to find. They have flexible rosy pink shells on their backs and enormous claws that they use to burrow through the dirt. They are only seen by humans when they emerge above ground. This happens so rarely that some armadillo researchers never see them in the wild. Little Digger's Big Claws At over 5 feet long from nose to tail, the giant armadillo could barely fit in the trunk of your car. But the pink fairy armadillo, the smallest of its kind, could easily fit in your shoe. Despite their tiny size, they are excellent diggers, and they even come equipped with a special butt plate to help them dig tunnels. Once they loosen dirt with their long claws, they back up and use this plate to compact the dirt. On rare occasions that pink fairy armadillos go above ground, their big claws make it difficult to walk on hard surfaces. Pink is for Southern Blind Snakes. Although this creature looks like an earthworm, you won't find him in your backyard. Unless your backyard is in Australia, that is. Southern blind snakes use their thick skulls and hard scales to burrow deep into the earth, slithering through the soil to find food. Hide and seek! Some animals are so good at hiding they aren't seen for decades, no matter how hard scientists look. In 1905, a new species of blind snake was discovered in Madagascar. It would be 100 years before scientists found another of its kind. Despite their name, blind snakes aren't actually blind, but they are negatively phototaxic. This is a fancy way of saying they avoid light, which might be why they're such great hiders. Pink is for Hopkins Rose Nudie Branches. Hopkins Rose Nudie Branch is one of the pinkest creatures in the ocean. It may look like it's made entirely of bubblegum, but don't let that fool you. Hopkins Rose isn't gum or a rose. It's really a sea snail without the shell. Instead, it has several finger-like projections that wave freely in the ocean currents. Plenty of nudibranches in the sea. Like many species of snails, nudibranches are hermaphroditic. This means they have both male and female organs and can mate with any mature nudibranch of their species. Doubling your dating pool comes in handy when you live in a vast ocean where fellow nudibranches are hard to find. Pink is for naked mole rats. Naked mole rats are eusocial rodents. This means that they work as a team to survive, with some mole rats digging tunnels and finding food, while others defend against attacks or take care of the young. Naked mole rats might also one day save human lives. Doctors and medical scientists have recently discovered the rodent's ability to stay cancer free, which should lead to important advances in the treatment of cancer patients. Not bad for a creature that looks like a pink potato with teeth. Hail to the queen! Naked mole rat colonies are led by a single queen. She is the only one that has babies, while other mole rats work hard to keep the colony safe and well fed. Naked mole rats are also talented architects, building elaborate homes with special chambers, including a toilet, a nursery, and even a pantry for storing food. There are no closets though. Who needs clothes when you were born to be naked? Pink is for pink sea stars. Pink sea stars have hundreds of sticky tube feet on their arms, allowing them to cling to rocks on the ocean floor while they search for prey. They also have another trick up their sleeve, or arm, when it comes to feeding. If a sea star comes across prey that is too big to fit in its mouth, it will stick its stomach out through its mouth, wrap around its meal, digest it, and then draw the goopy digested mess back into its body. Some might think this is gross, but seasoned animal explorers know the truth. It's seriously cool. The world's best party trick. If you've ever been to the beach, you might have seen sea stars on the rocks. Although these may be hard and brittle when they're dead, living sea stars look soft and flabby. They may look defenseless, but if a predator attacks, they can shed an arm, leaving it behind while they make their escape. Don't feel too bad for them though. Whenever they lose an arm, they just grow it back. 
Pink is for hippopotamuses. Hippopotamuses spend long days in some of the hardest parts of the world. To protect themselves from sunburn, hippos use a thick pink oil all over their skin. This pink sweat acts like an antibiotic sunscreen, so hippos can stay out in the sun all day without getting burned. Sink or swim. Hippos spend up to 16 hours a day submerged in the water to keep cool. They can close their nostrils and ears and hold their breath for five minutes as they trot along the river bottom. But water-loving hippos also have a well-kept secret. Despite their amphibious lifestyle, they actually can't swim. They're even too dense to float. Instead, they gracefully walk through the water with their toes lightly bouncing off the bottom of the riverbed. Pink is for pink slugs. Beneath the decaying twigs and leaf litter of the misty forest lies a slimy secret. Pink slugs produce two types of mucus. One type of slime prevents the slug from slipping on surfaces. The second type is excreted all over the slug's body, protecting it from predators. It is very hard to pick up a slimy slug because they are so slippery. Prime time for slime. Like many of the slugs that live in your backyard, pink slugs are nocturnal. They glide from their burrows late at night to feed on plant matter. During the day, they return to their beds of red eucalyptus leaves. While many people, including scientists, prefer critters that are cute and cuddly, slimy slugs have important roles to fill. By eating plant matter and pooping out soil, they act as part of nature's recycling crew. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. Pink is for pink land iguanas. Pink land iguanas are large reptiles that live on a single isolated volcano on one small island in the Galapagos, surviving off cactus pads, fallen fruit, and shrubs. Scientists used to think they were the same as other yellow land iguanas on the island, but in 2009 they took a closer look. Not only were pink iguanas a species of their own, but they branched off from the yellow iguanas 5.7 million years ago. It is thought that fewer than 100 of these elusive animals still exist. Return of the Reptiles Charles Darwin, a famous naturalist, first discovered land iguanas in the Galapagos in 1835. Back then, the Galapagos were full of these unique reptiles. In 1975, land iguanas almost went extinct after large packs of wild dogs preyed on them. To help preserve the species, iguanas were bred in captivity and introduced back to the wild once the dogs were removed. By 2008, the breeding program was a success, and today their numbers are growing. Pink is for dragon millipedes. Some insects wear pink to blend in, but the dragon millipede wants to stand out. By sporting hot pink, this millipede sends a message, stay away, I'm dangerous. If a predator tries to take a bite, dragon millipedes can secrete hydrogen cyanide, a toxic chemical from their bodies. Trouble ahead! These millipedes aren't the only animals that use vivid colors to warn predators. This is called a posomatic coloration. Poison dart frogs are brightly colored to showcase their toxins, and coral snakes are ringed with yellow and red to flaunt their deadly venom. After a mouthful of bitter toxin or a nasty bite, it doesn't take long for predators to learn to stay away from brightly colored animals. But dragon millipedes aren't all bad news. The hydrogen cyanide in their bodies also makes them smell like almonds. Pink is for red Euacaris. With bright pink faces that stand out against the leaves, red Euacaris are always on the move, leaping and swinging from tree to tree. You aren't supposed to judge a book by its cover, but you can judge a Uakari by its face. The healthier the Uakari is, the brighter his face will be. Uakaris with the brightest, pinkest faces are the most attractive to potential mates. Tree chop, troopers, and poopers. Red Uakaris are small South American primates that live in large groups called troops. One troop can have up to 100 animals, and as they travel through the treetops, they make the rainforest healthier. Every time your carrots eat fruit, they poop out the seeds, spreading them all around from the forest so new trees can grow. Who knew poop was so important? They also knock fruit to the ground when they forage, which feeds other hungry animals below. 
Pink is for hairy squat lobsters. Talk about a bad hair day. Hairy squat lobsters, bright pink bodies are covered with purple spots and yellow hairs. Have you ever seen someone with food caught in his mustache? Hairy squat lobsters use the delicate hairs on their body to trap microscopic algae, plankton, and bits of fish poop. By combing through its food-filled hairs, the hairy squat lobster has an easy meal on the go. What's in a name? Despite its name, the hairy squat lobster isn't a lobster at all. It's actually more closely related to the hermit crab. It can be very hard to see these tiny creatures as they are well camouflaged to match the barrel sponges they call home. They might not know it, but hairy squat lobsters have one of the oldest homes in the reef. Barrel sponges, often called the redwoods of the reef, can live for 2,000 years and they provide excellent living quarters for hundreds of animals. Pink is everywhere. There's a whole world of colorful creatures out there and scientists have discovered only a fraction of them. Maybe the next big discovery will be yours. Say what? A glossary of useful words. Some of the words in the text are in bold. If you didn't understand them, you can use this list to learn the definition for new terms. The end. Well, you can't talk about blobfish and snails and all those other slimy creatures without making slime. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, for this, you'll have half a cup of glue, half a cup of starch, and a stirring stick. You'll need to get yourself a bowl to mix it in. And you'll also need a half cup of water. I measured this out and put it in the Dixie cup. And then I do suggest getting a rubber scraper to get all the glue out um, because that's the main part of the slime. So what we're gonna do to make the slime is open this up. And you'll wanna save these. Um, they seal nicely so you can get, oh my goodness, I already got it on me. So that you can um, put your slime away. So wash them out real good and then you can store your slime in it. Okay, I've got it all down the front. Sorry, keep paper towels close at hand. And you can see I have wax paper down to protect my workspace. And it's a good thing too. Okay, we'll see how this works out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we've got the glue all in as much as I can from this here. The next thing we add is the water and we just kind of pour it in. Okay, I'm gonna take this off and this is my stir stick here. It's already looking goopy. Just a little more glue on here, maybe I can get that in there. You wanna try to get as much of the glue in there as you can. Um, and the other reason we don't make it in the thing is the container is because once you add the water it's just going to be too much so you want to mix this around really really well you want to make sure that it's completely mixed together oh I'm sorry you also need food coloring um, if you want to make it colorful you can add glitter can add eyeballs, confetti, whatever you want to add. We're just going to add food coloring to ours. Okay, this looks really well mixed. And I have pink food coloring or purple. We'll see what color this turns. Put several drops in. You don't have to put a ton in. Oh, it's purple. Oh, it's going to be a real deep purple. Remember, the more drops you in, the more saturated the color will be. That's really good, okay? Okay. Now we add the starch, and we don't wanna just dump the starch in. Um, this is the activator. <clears throat> Sometimes it starts activating before you get all of it in, and that's fine, you don't have to put all of it in. So we're just gonna slowly add some starch as we stir it. I can already feel it thickening. Look at that already. So 
So everything is half a cup, except for the food coloring, of course, which half a cup would be a lot of food coloring. Um, Eventually you want to work it with your hands. I want to just see how far I can get it with a stick. I'm kind of beating it like scrambled eggs here. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, we did use all the starch. And I'm stirring it more. Now I think I'm just gonna have to do it. Oh my goodness, okay slime and just kind of mix it in with your hand. You can see it getting more and more slimy, slimier and slimier. Oh, okay. This feels weird. Um, if you can't tell, this is the first time I've personally made slime. <laughs> I've done it with kids. Um, my daughter taught me how to make it initially and she used, um, what is it called? Saline solution for her um, reacting agent. But um, I think it's easier with the starch. And there it is. There's slime. Can't beat that. That's really oozy. And then if the rest of this doesn't want to get in there, we can move it onto the um, wax paper and get what we can in there. Too, too sticky. If you want, you can add a little bit of cornstarch in it to make it so it doesn't stick so much. But um, I think this is pretty good actually. I can't believe it worked out so perfectly my first time. So that's it, guys. That's slime, just like our blobfish and our snails and all those other icky creatures we read about. I'm sorry, those odd creatures, interesting odd creatures. And then I'm gonna wash out these other bowls so that I can um, split this in two and put them in a container. So that's it.